welcome to another sermon from the Gardner Lane Church of Christ. Today I'd like to talk with you for a few moments on the subject of the miracles of Jesus. In John chapter 2 and in verse 11 it says, This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and manifest his glory, and his disciples believed in him. One of the first things we see is his miracles. Some things we notice about his miracles. Uh, several sources tell us that he performed about 37 total miracles in the Gospels. Also, uh, what he said about uh, the miracles. He said in John chapter 14 and in verse 11, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Uh, what we see regarding this here is, uh, as well, the words of John. The words of John in John chapter 20 and in verse 30 and 31, it says, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the books, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life, you might have life in his name. When we see the book of John, we see that there are several uh, miracles in the book of John. In fact, there are seven. Uh, the waters turned to wine, his first miracle. We see also that he heals the nobleman's son. He heals the infirm man in John chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. He feeds the 5,000 in John chapter 6, verse 13. He walks on the water in chapter 6, verse 16 through 21. He restores sight to the blind man in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. And then the last of these is uh, Lazarus. Uh, he raises him from the dead in John chapter 11, verses 1 through verse 45. Concerning his miracles, that's not what we really want to talk about this morning, though. What we want to talk about this morning is miracles that Jesus did not perform. Uh, these are suggested, yet at the same time, he, he didn't do these things. What was suggested by Satan? He had stated in Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Also we see something else when he was going to Jerusalem. We see something suggested by James and John. It says in chapter 9 of Luke, in verse 51, beginning, And it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. He sent some messengers before his face, and as they went, they entered the village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned to rebuke them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy man's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. They had to request this of Jesus. But did Jesus allow this? And again, just like with Satan, the answer is no. In Peter's reaction, he suggested something that Jesus do. It says in uh, Matthew chapter 26 and in verse 51 through 54, he said, and suddenly... One of those with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, 
For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot pray to my Father, and he will provide me more than twelve legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? Did he command the twelve legions of angels to come? Well, the answer is no. Something else, another miracle that was suggested by someone that Jesus didn't do. Herod suggested a miracle. In Luke, the 22nd chapter, or Luke chapter 23, and then verses 8 through 11. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired a long time to see him, because he had heard many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. And he questioned him with many words, and he answered him nothing. The chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. Did he perform a miracle for Herod? Well, again, the answer is no. A fifth example here. His enemies at the cross in Matthew chapter 27, verse 39 through verse 42. It says that those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, you who destroy the temple and build it up in three days, save yourself. If you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe, we will believe him. Well, did he do that miracle? Did he come down from the cross? And again, the answer is no. Well, we've looked at miracles, and we see that some suggested miracles that Jesus did not perform. Now we ask the question, why? Why did he not do these things? The stones turned to bread. He said, if you are the Son of God, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, Jesus didn't need to prove anything to Satan. He showed himself to be the Son of God by not turning the stones into bread. He trusted in the Father. He obeyed him and not Satan. It was not about bread, but it was about listening to God and his word and not yielding to that adversary. How about fire from heaven? They asked the question, Lord, do you want us to command fire from heaven or to come down from heaven? In Luke chapter 9 and verse 54, his purpose in coming was not to destroy, but to save. His disciples needed this same type of spirit. He was going to send them to all the world with the gospel. And every time their message was rejected, were they given into the fact that someone needed to be destroyed because the message of the gospel was rejected? How about to engage in a physical battle? We see Peter cutting out Malchus's ear. He said in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 52, put your sword in its place. Or do you think that I cannot pray to my Father and he'll provide me more than 12 legions of angels? The Lord very plainly said that his kingdom was not of this world. If it were of this world, it would have fallen. He talked about that in John chapter 18, verse 36. It is a spiritual war against Satan and his forces. 
How about entertaining a ruler like Herod? He had longed for the time to see Jesus and watch Jesus perform some miracle. Herod hoped to see some miracle done by him in Luke chapter 23 and in verse 8. But Jesus wouldn't perform a miracle to entertain the ruler, nor would he perform one to deliver himself from suffering. He would experience at the hands of men of war. At least four times in the Gospel of Luke, he tells them that he must suffer at the hands of sinful men. And then again, the fifth example of coming down from the cross. He said, save yourselves. And they said, save yourselves. He saved others he himself cannot save. Matthew chapter 27, verse 40 and verse 42. The irony of these statements is they're true. If he saved himself, which he could have done, then he would not have been able to save others. In his death, the shedding of his blood, the forgiveness of sin was made available to all. Prophecy would have been unfulfilled and salvation unattainable. Well, the last point here, and that's lessons. Lessons that we can learn. One lesson that we can learn is that life is more than just bread. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and in verses 1 through 3, Every commandment which I command you today, you must carefully observe that you must live and multiply and go in and possess the land which, your, which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you out of the wilderness for 40 years to humble you and test you. To know that your heart, that you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you. He allowed you to hunger. He fed you with manna, which you did not know, or did your fathers know. That he might make you know that every man should not live by bread alone, but the man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Not only that. But another lesson that we learned when they wanted to call fire down is that you're going to be rejected many times. But you still need to be steadfast. In Matthew and in chapter 10 and in verse 22 it says, And you'll be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. In John 4 and in verse 35 he says, Do you not say but there are four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look to the fields, for they're already white for a harvest. Maybe that of a battle to fight, where our, our, our battle is a spiritual battle. Peter was trying to fight a physical battle with Malchus, the high priest's servant. He says, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We also need to suffer. Jesus suffered. He suffered at the hands of Herod as well as Pilate. And he wouldn't perform a miracle for Herod. We see in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 12, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9, it says, Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. And then the last point today, and 
that's motivation because of the cross. He says in 1 Corinthians, and in chapter 15 and in verses 9 and 10, for I am the least of the apostles. I'm not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So there today, we look for just a few moments at a sermon on miracles that Jesus did not perform. We appreciate you tuning in today. We appreciate those that uh, follow from week to week. And we bid you a very pleasant day.